Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision, and last time we left off at using the big three. That's translation, rotation, and scaling. And today we're going to look at translation in a little more detail. Now you may think of translation as back and forth in a straight line, but if you take into account the x, y, and z axes, you can actually get some pretty complicated motions using parametrized curves. And the curve we're going to look at today is the torus. Let's take a look at the application we're going to build. And so this is what I call a torus worm because basically it's a worm going around and around a torus. Let me show you the shape. So imagine that you've got a, a donut shape kind of here and your worm's going around that torus. And there's a center hole and it's just wrapping round and round. But there's a problem. If you look at the tip of your torus, it doesn't look like it's actually going around. It looks like it's going back and forth. And the reason it's going back and forth and not around is because of sorting issues. So we're also going to take a look at sorting issues toward the end of this tutorial. So let's get to building this torus worm. So when it comes to working with complicated mathematical expressions, the first place I'd like to go is mathworld.wolfram.com. You can usually find uh, a number of topics there and just this morning I needed to do a least squares and I went right to Wolfram and there it was and I coded the equation. Now we're going to actually look at parametrized curves and so you're probably wondering what is a parametric equation. Parametric equations are a set of equations that define the coordinates of the dependent variables x, y, and z of a curve or surface in terms of one or more independent variables or parameters. And that's really good for basically you've got two parameters for example here take a look at this uh, torus you got two parameters, v and u, and you're taking all possible choices of v and u, which will plot that torus. Now, it may seem a little bit inefficient, but when you're creating meshes, and we'll do this in Chapter 3, or you're creating a torus for a view in 3D, this is extremely useful. Now, let's take a look and see what the parameters mean. So you have this u parameter, and basically what that does, that means all possible u values around the z-axis actually is an angle. And you have this V right here, and what that is is all possible angles around your torus or your donut. See this small circle right here. Next you have your C radius, basically, which is the distance of the center of your, since your torus or your ring, to the center axis of symmetry. And finally you have the A, which basically is the diameter of your small torus. So you can actually work with these four parameters. It's very important to know what they are and what they do. And we'll use all of these in our um, application. We're going to start off by building a simple application, just a single ball that's going to orbit a torus, and then we're going to add multiple balls, uh, give them different colors, and call that a torus worm. Let's take a look at the application we have right here. Basically, the first part of the application uh, imports the display of Sprite, of course, and you have this little angle right here, and that's your uh, iteration angle. That's what's going to make your engine work. You're going to change your angle and cause your ball to oscillate through your torus by iterating this. Next, you create your ball sprite and you add it to the stage. And we've done that before in other applications, so you should understand that well. Uh, then you're going to create your animation engine, of course, just by doing an on-inner frame add listener. And you're going to create your listener function. Basically every time a frame is iterated you've now got uh, this function that gets fired. And what does this function do? Well in the first part it iterates your angle and then it takes that torus equation and it starts plugging in the new angle values. Now you're going to ask yourself a very important question right now. Hey wait a second I had two angles but I'm only iterating one. What am I doing here? What you're doing is that you have two angles right but if you basically take one angle and you give it a multiple. This is multiple times two and this is divided by four. What it will actually do, it will carve a path around your torus. So you're actually not drawing the torus itself, but you're actually just carving a path around the torus for the ball to navigate by giving a multiple of single angles. Let's run the program and see what it looks like. So we're running the application and what we see basically is a single ball basically wrapping itself around a torus. So drawing that, you see you have your torus, and the ball is wrapping itself around that torus, round and round. And so that's fairly simple, and you can see basically, just like the code says, the first part draws a ball, you have your oscillation angle, and you're carving the path by taking those two angles and making one a multiple of the other. Uh, let's go on and make something a little bit more complicated. In this section, we're going to transform your single oscillating ball into a series of balls. And we're going to do that by 
creating a particle system. This probably is one of the most important sections in the book because it's here that you learn to build your first basic particle system. If you can change basically code into a particle system, you can make it run a lot more efficient. Let's go ahead and run the program and remind ourselves what we're looking at. And there's our basically a particle system created uh, of multiple balls with varying alphas spinning around a torus using parametric equations. Huh? That's a lot to say, wasn't it? But it's actually fairly easy to build. In the first part of the code, what I do is declare the number of particles. Then I create a particle array. That's going to become very important because I'm going to stuff all my balls into this particle array. I have a little number of variables that I'm going to use to, as I iterate all the balls on stage, when I get to the very last one, I'm basically going to use this number to count how many I've added and then start up a uh, on inner frame as soon as I get to the last ball. So as soon as I start up my code, I run this for loop, and this for loop iterates to the number of particles, and it updates the stage. And the update stage method is right here. And what the update stage method is doing is basically just drawing the ball, adding it to the stage, and then stuffing it into the particle array. And this is extremely important, because once I stuff it into a particle array, I can control each individual ball by its index number. Now once we get to the very end of the number of particles, we've iterated through all of them, basically we've got a little num variable here, and it says when that num variable is equal to the number of particles, then I want to start this on inner frame method. And what this on inner frame method is going to do is begin iterating through the entire series of particles and guiding them around my torus. Let's take a look at that now. So here's my on inner frame method. And what I'm going to do in this on inner frame method is going to, every frame, I'm going to fire a for loop. So basically, on every frame, I'm going to iterate through every single particle. And that's very important to realize. And uh, in this iteration, I'm basically going to iterate the angle. And uh, I'm going to change alpha for each ball. And then I just basically have my three parametric equations, as I did last time. But now those three parametric equations are for each individual particle. And so as time elapses, one follows the other. Really simple arrangement. Very easy to set up a particle system. And it's all based upon one important concept. And that concept is to push your element into an array. And upon each inner frame, you iterate through every single particle in that array and control its properties by using an, its index number. Isn't that super cool? Hey, this is extremely efficient. Let me tell you how efficient it is. It's very important that you learn how to use particle systems. They run very efficiently in a sense of how you code a structure. I'll give you an example. I was working on a research project at UCF, University of Central Florida, and I was given some code that was actually three nested do loops. And by taking that system and turning it into a particle system, using the same approach here, where you basically push everything into an array and then you iterate over each ray on an on inner frame, I was actually able to reduce that system to just one loop. And it ran a lot more efficiently. All of this is covered in the book in great detail in chapter one. And uh, here it is right here. And uh, make sure you purchase a book and you go through that. But now we still have one more problem. And that's the issue of this torus worm wrapping itself around a cylinder, but not really looking like it's wrapping, but more like it's zigzagging back and forth. And that will be handled in the next video on sorting.